Please stand as you are able. During the season of Easter, we'll be beginning our worship services with a thanksgiving for baptism, grounding us in our identity as God's beloved children in this season of resurrection. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood and into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In the desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is a water of life. Alleluia. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord, Lord and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship this morning at St. John's. My name is Pastor James Demmel. I'm one of the pastors here on staff. It's my pleasure to welcome you and to worship with us this morning. Um, as we continue our worship, just a few announcements. Um, we have a lot going on now that we've uh, passed the, the Easter hurdle, and so there's a lot coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, next Sunday is a big Sunday in the life of our congregation for two reasons. First, in the morning, we will be worshiping at uh, our lake retreat property up on High Rock Lake. The address is in your bulletin. If you'd like to join us for that, we would welcome you. That will be um, at 10 a.m., and then after that worship service at the lake, um, we'll have a covered dish meal, and you're asked to bring a side or dessert. The congregation is providing the main course, um, and also games and things for the kids to do. So it should be a fun day at our retreat lake property up on High Rock. Please do plan to join us if you're able. If not, don't fear, we will still have an 11 a.m. service here in the sanctuary as normal. I'll be leading the lake worship. Pastor Lori will be here um, leading us in worship at 11 a.m. So those of us who watch online will still have a live stream here this week as well, and you'll be able to see all the pictures uh, after the event. So that's next Sunday morning. Next Sunday evening is also an important event in the life of our congregation. At 7 p.m., we will be having a worship service 
right here in the sanctuary for the installation of our new senior pastor, Dan Joyner Miller. His wife, Kendra, will be preaching. Uh, We'll have uh, guests and clergy from all over our community and probably all over our Senate as well that will gather to celebrate Dan and the start of his call here at St. John's in a formal way. So I know we're uh, pulling out all the stops for that installation worship, so it's going to be a powerful service. We do invite you to join us for that uh, next Sunday at 7 p.m. Hopefully you can get some sort of Sunday nap in between the morning and the evening. Um, Besides that, what else do we have going on? It is the time of VBS registration, Vacation Bible School. We already have about 50 kids registered. We expect that number to grow. And we have a lot of ways that you can help uh, Miss Stacy pull off VBS this year. There's a table out in the narthex. If you're interested in volunteering or helping her with supplies, please do stop by and visit that table. Um, The only other thing that we have to mention, right, there's more. Um, May the 4th is more than just Star Wars Day here at St. John's. That's what I'll be celebrating in the evening. In the morning, we are having our first ever ministry celebration. This is an event that we're going to pull off that will be campus-wide. We'll have golf carts to help people move back and forth across our campus. And its purpose is to put on display the many ministries that we have at St. John's. It takes almost 100 different volunteers across our two services to pull off worship on a Sunday morning. And so you can learn about how all that works and how you might be able to get involved. And so... That is the end of our uh, long announcement time. We will continue our worship with a delightful piece from our women's ensemble.
Our reading this morning is from the first letter of John, the third chapter. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins, and no one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. This is the word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead On the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. All of the resurrection stories have the same thing in common. From the story that we hear on Easter morning to the story of Doubting Thomas that we heard last week to the story we hear today from Luke. And that's this. Experiencing the risen Christ is not some ghostly encounter or just some, some feeling of the heart. The risen Christ, it's a, a physical, embodied, tangible reality. On Easter morning, Mary Magdalene tearfully embraces Jesus, unwilling to let him go. In the story of Doubting Thomas, Jesus shows up with with scars and wounds on his hands and feet, inviting the skeptical to reach out and touch. On the road to Emmaus, Jesus stopped and broke bread with those scarred hands. In the Gospel of John, the disciples find Jesus after they come in from a long day fishing, just sitting by a campfire, warming himself in the light of the fire. And today in our reading from Luke's Gospel, 
when the disciples are startled and terrified and still in disbelief, what does Jesus do? But he takes some broiled fish and he simply eats it. Every resurrection story in the Bible across the Gospels wants us to know this truth. When Jesus rose from the dead, it wasn't some sort of spiritual resurrection or just some, some metaphorical idea that we can, could conceive of. No, when God offers salvation, it's not just for the soul, but for our entire existence. Soul and mind and body. And this, my friends, this is very, very good news. Because being a Christian, knowing God is as much about what happens to our bodies, right? The love and charity that extends from our open hands. The kind words that we share and the gospel truth that we proclaim with our tongues. The sonic vibrations of our worship music that re reverberates within our ears. It has as much to do with that, that as it does with what goes on between our ears and what we ponder alone in our hearts. Right? This is not to dismiss the inner life or the life of the mind when it comes to our faith. But we do this thing sometimes where we exclusively talk about our relationship with Jesus or what it means to be a Christian merely as an intellectual exercise or, a, or just a, a private acceptance of our heart. And yet when I think about the strongest and most important relationships in my life, they look a lot like Jesus returning to the disciples after the resurrection. They look like sharing a wonderful meal. They look like a heartfelt conversation around a fire. Like the tangible feel of someone's hand in mine. They look like an impossible adventure that we decided to have, where we look back after all is said and done and wonder how our feet have brought us this far together. They look like embracing one another at the threshold of a house, reminding each other that we will see the other person soon. These are the moments that bring us close to one another. These are the moments that let us know that, that we are, what we are experiencing with one another is real. And it's good. And it's the most important part of our lives. For example, I think about my relationship with, with my wife. Right? And you would think that the relationship of two pastors meeting in seminary, you would think that this would have been forged by the hours we spent between the ears, right? Studying in the library or in class, or the moments of the heart as we sat side by side in the chapel listening to sermons. While those were moments were life-giving and lovely, the moments when I really feel close to Kendra, when I could feel our relationship budding, when I felt like we were having a real moment together, they actually went a little more like this. If you know Kendra at all, this isn't that far-fetched to imagine, but uh, when we were in seminary, Kendra and a friend of hers decided that it was a good idea to throw a monthly dinner for the seminary. The entire seminary. We're talking like 150 200 people, students, faculty, staff, their families, just the two of them. Kendra and a friend, cooking for 200 people once a month, every month for the whole academic year. And I know, this looks a lot like our Wednesday night meals. But let me remind you, this is just two women who are like 23. They didn't have an industrial kitchen. They had a kitchen in, a, in, a, in an apartment building with an efficiency oven. I put this up on the screen at our 927 service. I like to put up like theological points up there, but I put this up on the screen just so it would sink in. We're talking about 25 to 30 lasagnas. I'm just going to let that sit there. That's a, lot, that's a lot of lasagna. All right, this is a longer story, but I'll keep it brief. Guess, take a wild guess, at who... They called into service. 
right? Browning beef, cooking noodles, layering casseroles, trying to bake them all in our oven, realizing we were running out of time and calling every single person that we knew with a kitchen to see if they could bake a lasagna or two, right? Who'd they call? Yeah, that's right, the new boyfriend, (laughs) me. And we felt all the range of emotions the disciples did in our gospel story today. Startled over the amount of lasagnas, terrified that 200 people would show up and go, go away hungry, disbelief that we had gotten ourselves in over our heads. But also, just like the story, when the time came and dinner time approached, the lasagnas arrived on bikes, by foot, through the rain that had started to pour that evening, and onto the great hall tables. And then the people started to arrive, crowds of people. And in each other's presence, the entire seminary community ate a meal together, giving thanks to God for the opportunity to gather. Bodies next to bodies, eating, laughing, and living. We look back on that moment and laugh and thank God for that real, tangible, life-affirming, wonderful, wacky moment. And then I remind her that they had to do it all again the next month. And that next month, she made me cook 300 bratwurst on a charcoal grill at night. I, you know, I, let's, just not, let's just say that not everyone got a fully cooked sausage. I couldn't see what I was doing. We remember those moments like they were yesterday. I can't remember what books we read in the library together. I can't remember what those theology papers were about that we stayed up all night to write. But those real tangible moments, those human moments of of breaking bread with one another, of human interaction, and let's be honest, human shortcomings, but also human grace and perseverance, they were all on display. These moments were real and they made our relationship real on that day and then for every wild and wonderful day since then. And friends, this real flesh and blood between the teeth and in the stomach, Jesus is the Jesus who needs to show up to the disciples after the resurrection too. Because it's only this physical, embodied, hungry Jesus who can rebuild the relationship with the disciples. The relationship that was pierced and broken as Jesus' body was pierced and broken upon the cross. Right? This is the same body that was born in a stable. This is the same body that got lost and separated from his parents in Jerusalem. This is the same body that was soaked by the waters in the Jordan River. This is the same body that hungered for bread in the Judean desert. This is the same body that wept for his friend as he died. The same one that was adorned with costly oil. The same one that bent down to wash his disciples' feet. This is the same Jesus who gave his body as wine and bread so that we might know and experience his touch of grace when we gather. Friends, we cannot see the risen Christ or hear him call our name in person. We cannot reach out and put our hands in the marks on his hands and feet. And yet, we too need what the disciples had, this embodied, physical, hungry Jesus to show up. It was important for the disciples in order to calm their doubts and fears. And it's important for us because we're embodied, physical, and hungry people. We build relationships over dinner tables and taking walks with loved ones and friends. We grow closer as we go through real flesh and blood experiences with one another. We learn to love each other as we grow together, as our bodies fail and age as our bodies ache and break, just like our Savior's. And so we need a Savior who makes a point, 
to raise both body and soul from the dead. A Savior who can take all that is broken, all that's mistreated, all that's wronged, all that's forgotten in this world from those who are needlessly killed by war or violence to those who suffer hunger and neglect from the cruelty that leaves scars on our hands and feet to the injuries and illnesses that we carry with us. We need a Savior who will say, look at my hands and feet, touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have, that I have just like you have. And this is why we come here. This is why church is so important. Because it's here in this place that we can tangibly hold on to and feel the bread and wine of the communion table, table, the, the water and the flame and the oil of baptism. This is a place we return to because this is it's a physical proclamation that our faith is as real as the as the hard woods of the pews you're sitting on. It's as sturdy as as the brick building that we sit in that rises to the sky. It's as rich as the fullness of sound in our hymns of praise, as encouraging as the warm embrace of a long-standing church friend, as enticing as a smell of a delicious meal in Ritchie Hall. When Jesus visits the disciples after the resurrection, the story is always the same, friends. The story says, do not be afraid. It is I. The one whom you lived and ate And walked beside the one whom you love. The body and bones and blood of the one who loves you. And just like the lasagna story, it's just another story in my relationship with my wife. Jesus' embodied resurrection is just Another story, but a story in every Christian's relationship of love with God. And for that, we say thanks be to God. Amen.
living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge, judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us share the peace with one another. Peace be with you.
Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. O oh God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers. Just as we need food for our physical hunger, we need you as sustenance for life. Lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity, abundant life. God of grace. O oh God, our Creator, you bring forth all life on earth and give us a beautiful world in which to live. Help us be faithful stewards with all that you have created. God of grace. O oh God, our Savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond human knowledge. We pray for leaders of all nations. Move in their hearts and guide their plans toward justice and the common good. We plead for peace and the laying down of weapons. God of grace. O oh God, our elder, you care for all your children. Encourage those who are in times of transition, facing the loss of familiar routines and anticipating change. Guide all who journey in grief, doubt, or uncertainty. God of grace. O oh God, our center, you bring all people together through your love and grace. Help us to remember our identity and purpose as we use our gifts and talents to serve you. Move us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to share in beloved community. God of grace. O oh God, our resting place. Your Son, Jesus, promised that we are held in your love forever. We remember those who have died and ask that you comfort those who mourn. God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the Lord's blessing today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
hallelujah. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad.